So here we will discuss yet another of the things that I call composite rules, namely this time the product rule. How do you find the derivative of a product of two functions, like x times sine x? Now, I think if you have any instincts about this at all, you would think that you just take the derivative of x, the derivative of sine x, and then you multiply them together. And so you would claim by that logic that the answer is 1 cos x, and yet that is completely wrong. So your instincts about pro you know, derivatives of products is wrong. Um, and so what is the right rule? Well, it's called the product rule, and I have it written down here. So again, if all you want is the upshot, the end result, this is it. This is what this is the product rule. And it would tell us in this particular example, like x sine x, that you take the derivative of x, which is 1, times sine, not the derivative of sine, sine. So you get 1 times sine. And over here, you leave x alone and take the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So you get x cosine x. So this is, in fact, the derivative of x sine x. Uh, now here, I will give a proof of the product rule. So as always, if you don't care about the proof, you can probably safely skip it and not lose anything that you need for your class. So, uh, OK, product rule. Uh, we are taking the derivative of the product f times g, which I just go straight away and call f of x times g of x. If I wanted to be a little bit more precise, I would have said that this is f times g of x and then split it apart. But uh, I'm not going to continue being that tedious. So, um, so I just go ahead and call this f of x g of x. And then over here, this is f of x minus h, g of x minus h. And I need to somehow sneakily uh, work in the derivative of each function somehow. And, uh, well, there's this common sort of trick, uh, somewhat common anyway, uh, of if you want something in there that would sort of uh, uh, lead to an expression you like, then you kind of... You, you put it in and you take it out, right? Um, so what I want to have in my picture is, uh, uh, you know, something that kind of, you know, has, has g of x minus h in it that I could factor out f of x, right? Because uh, if, I, if I, I have f of x attached here and I want to get it away somehow. So how do I get f of x away from g of x and yet still group together with g of x minus h. Well, I insert this little term right here that is built for f of x to factor out of it. But I can't just insert it. Um, I have to also take it away, so I cancel it back out, right? Whenever you do this kind of a thing, if you change the expression in some way, it has to sort of balance out so that you aren't ultimately changing the expression. You're only changing how it looks. And so that's what I've done here, is by subtracting this and then adding it back in, I have not changed the, the object, I've only changed how it looks. But it now looks a certain way so that it is ripe for factorization. And so I factor out f of x, and uh, what's left over is exactly what you want for the derivative of g. Now, with this leftover bit, what do we do? Well, this is ripe for factoring out g of x minus h. And what's left over, oops, I missed a parenthesis <coughs> in the text here. So uh, let's see, can I quickly find where this is? Um, oops, that's not the right place. Um, yeah, there it is. So I'll just quickly insert the parentheses and rebuild and um so there we go okay so parentheses back in um so this is now the right expression um so this is the uh exactly what you want for the derivative of f and so if i just distribute the divide by h part and distribute the limit just enough so that i have here 
exactly the expression of the derivative of g, and that's what goes here. I have the expression for the derivative of f, and I flip it around so that I have lexical order. That's just kind of the order that I tend to like to write things in. And there you have it. That's product rule.